Easter. A time for fake grass, plastic eggs, these things, chocolate bunnies, and people dressed as bunnies. And then there are the weird parts of Easter, like fake grass, plastic eggs, these things, chocolate bunnies, and people dressed as bunnies, which is interesting. But what does all this stuff have to do with Easter? And if this holiday is about more than candy and wearing uncomfortable clothes to church and lunch with your relatives, what makes Easter happy? Well, good evening, everyone, and happy Easter. Man, I hope you are having a great day, and I hope you are making the best out of this 30-day stay-at-home order than we have been put under. So we are in day seven. We are a full week into the 30-day quarantine period, which means we still have three more weeks to go. But listen, hang in there. I promise you, we're going to make it through this thing together. So I know that it is not officially Easter Sunday, not yet, but you got to admit, man, everywhere you go, Walmart, Target, the grocery store, they have been getting ready for Easter for the past couple of weeks. And I don't have to tell you, right? It doesn't matter where you grew up or where you came from, but Easter really is a happy time, isn't it? I mean, think about it. What other day are you encouraged to eat like a reckless amount of candy? Or what other days do you see people wearing pastel colors and they can actually enjoy it and get away with it? Think about what we do on Easter. We dye eggs, we hide them in the backyard, we have Easter egg hunts, and parents force their kids to take photos with an oversized rabbit permanently traumatizing their childhood. So for the next two weeks, we are going to be talking about some of the reasons that Easter is truly a big deal. And no, I'm not talking about the Easter Bunny or about Reese's Easter eggs, even though I think they are absolutely amazing. I'm talking about the real reason for Easter, and that is the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Now, before we get into that, before we start to talk about today's topic, um, let's talk about this strange tradition that revolves around this holiday Easter, the Easter Bunny. Now, am I the only one, but is the Easter Bunny actually kind of something that creeps you out a little bit? And it's actually a little bit kind of freaky when you think about it. And if you don't believe me here, just take a look at some of these pictures. Now you have to admit, right? Those pictures are not only hilarious, but they can also be a little terrifying as well, right? And all of us would say that, yes, Easter is a happy time. It's a joyous time. But when you look at those kids, they look anything but happy, don't they? In fact, they look terrified. They look full of fear. And that's something that I think all of us know about, the feeling of fear. I mean, think about that. Fear can take away your happiness faster than just about anything else in this world. Now, if you don't believe me, here's what I want you to do. I want you to go down to your basement. I want you to turn off the lights and tell me that fear doesn't cause you to run up the steps faster than you have ever ran in your entire life, right? Because fear, fear can take away our sense of happiness and our sense of joy. And see, we've all experienced fear in so many different ways. Maybe for you, you have the fear of not fitting in. Or maybe you have a fear of being made fun of. The fear of finding out what others have said about you. Or maybe you have a fear that others are going to find out about you, who you really are, and maybe the things that you've done. Maybe you have a fear of being rejected. Or a fear of the future. Or just simply a fear of being alone. Listen, whatever your particular fear is, you know that fear can wreck your sense of happiness and peace like that. And I don't have to tell you, there is nothing happy about living a life full of fear. So as we head into Easter, let me remind you, it's not about chocolate bunnies. It's not about dying eggs. It is about celebrating the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And because of that, because of his resurrection, you and I 
no longer have to live in fear. All right, show of hands. How many of you have ever heard of a guy by the name of the Apostle Paul? Okay, great, awesome. And most of you probably know Paul as a follower of Jesus, am I right? A guy who did some crazy, amazing miracles throughout his entire life. But did you know that before the Apostle Paul was a follower of Jesus, he was actually one of the most feared men in his entire country? He spent years trying to kill and imprison people who follow Jesus. And then one day, as he was traveling from like one town to another, he encounters the Lord Jesus. And there's this crazy story, this crazy scene that is found in Acts chapter 9. And because of this, it changes his life forever. Now, from that moment on, instead of trying to hurt people who follow Jesus, Paul actually gave his life to helping them learn the truth about who Jesus really is the Son of God. And the craziest part of this story is how Paul went from causing people to live a life of fear to actually living a life that you and I would both say, man, is completely full of fear. I mean, during Paul's lifetime, he was shipwrecked. He was put into prison multiple times. He was constantly being threatened. He was beaten and whipped multiple times over and over. And in one uh, instance, he was actually bitten by a venomous snake. And those are really just the things that we know about him, the things that have been recorded in the Bible. But see, despite all of this, Paul seemed to live a life without fear. But the question is, how? How did he live this life? Well, in a letter that he wrote to the church in Corinth, we actually find an answer to this question. You see, Paul is reminding them that Jesus, the Son of God, the one who they believe in and follow, died for their sins on a cross and three days later rose from the dead by the power of the Holy Spirit. And because of this, because of what Jesus did, they no longer have to live in fear. Check out what he says. Death has been swallowed up in victory. Where, O oh death, is your victory? Where, O oh death, is your sting? It's like Paul is laughing at the fear of death. He's laughing at the, in the face of fear, and he is reminding the people in this church that they no longer have to live in fear because of what Jesus did. Because of Jesus' death, and resurrection, they no longer have to be afraid. You see, because of the resurrection, Paul tells us, death can no longer defeat you. And because it can no longer defeat you, you no longer have to fear it. I mean, think about that. How awesome is that? How awesome is that? Because of what Jesus has done for you and I, we no longer have to fear any kind of death. And do you know why that is? Because he destroyed it once and for all. And here is what I truly believe. Because Jesus has defeated death, that means that he can defeat and destroy any other fear that you may have in your life. Now, how do I know that? Well, because in Romans 8, Paul says, the Spirit of God, the same Spirit that rose Jesus from the dead, is the same Spirit that now lives in you. So because of the Holy Spirit, because of the same power that enabled Jesus to rise from the dead, you are now empowered to step out of your fear and live a life that Jesus wants for you. You are now able to live a life that you can overcome the fear that is holding you back. So let me close by asking you a simple question. How has fear been holding you back? How has fear been holding you back? And what, what fear in your life is causing you not to live the way that Jesus wants you to? What fear is causing you not to live the life that Jesus is calling you into? See, whatever that fear is, here's what I want you to do today. I want you to take it to God. I want you to give it to him. And I want you to believe that the Holy Spirit will break you free from that fear and enable you to live boldly in the name of Jesus Christ. See, that's what faith is. And that's what the Christian life is based on. And because of this, because the Holy Spirit can break us free from the, the bonds you know, or the chains of fear, because of this, 
you and I can truly say that, man, this is a happy Easter, that this time of the year is a joyous and happy and, and peaceful celebration. Students, I truly hope that you know this joy. I truly hope that you know Jesus. And if you don't know Jesus, let me ask you this. What are you waiting for? What is holding you back? What is keeping you from entering in to a relationship with Jesus and allowing him to pull you out of that life of fear and allow you to live boldly for him? So all you have to do is go to him. Ask him to forgive you of your sins and ask him to give you the power through the Holy Spirit to live a life, a life away from fear, a life that is not crippled by fear. Jesus loves you. He wants you to know that and he wants you to live a happy and joyous life. All right, let's pray. Father, thank you so much for today. Thank you so much for your word, Lord. Thank you so much that you sent your son Jesus to die for us, to take away our sins, and to give us the power of the Holy Spirit to allow us, to enable us to live a life that is not full of fear, a life that is free from fear, and a life that glorifies you. Father, thank you so much for your son Jesus. Thank you so much that you sent him to this earth to die, and thank you for his resurrection. Because of it, we all can truly believe that this year this will be a happy Easter and this will be a joyous celebration for all of us. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. All right, everyone, you have an awesome day. I can't wait to see you here in a couple weeks, and I'll be checking in with you on social media throughout this entire week. Have a good one.